Hey everyone, Zach here with another Top 10. This is something requested I'd go over just to balance things out. So without further ado, let's go over the Top 10 Boss Monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, these monsters will either represent an end game strategy for a deck, or a fearsome often seen card that will either best represent an archetype or best represent a deck. Uh, I'll be going over this in a bit more of a respectful manner as I received some comments saying that the graphic nature of the previous video was a bit off-putting. Number 10, Dark Strike Fighter. Back in the day of Black Wings, this card was effectively the way that you would set up an FTK. What you would do was you, you would more often than not set up multiple Black Whirlwinds or at least just one Black Whirlwind, start a chain, get a full field of either level 7 or level 6 Black Wing Synchro Monsters, then set up Dark Strike Fighter at the end, either attack with them, or if you're lucky enough, get big old Trigodia style monsters out on board with high levels, and then just sacrifice every single one of them, and then sacrifice himself to deal lethal damage. This card was so powerful that in an effort to try and make it more balanced and manageable, they effectively killed the card. This card was forbidden for a few years until it came back and nobody touches it ever again. Number 9, Shooting Quasar Dragon. One of the biggest combos in the 5D's era was making Synchro Monsters out of other Synchro Monsters. Shooting Star was the original, but we often saw in Dueling Network and such that of a looming threat of Shooting Quasar Dragon. It was a card built from three Synchros that could basically do whatever it felt like. You can shut anything off, and back then nobody had an answer to this guy aside from like Volcanic Queen and Lava Golem. The monster was so tough but so memorable that instead of banning it, they removed ways to make it quick and hit cards like Spore, Blow Up Bulb, and Dandelion, stuff like that. Plan engine. Nowadays, synchro centralized decks aren't very prominent aside from like Yang Zings, but even a tough Cosmo player would have to admit if the opponent had this bad boy out, things would be a tough cookie to eat. Number 8 El Shadow Construct. I was contemplating whether or not to have Elemental Hero Absolute Zero on the list, but as I went through the Yu-Gi-Oh card database, I saw this evil from beyond and started having flashbacks. In Japan, her name was El Shadal Nephilim. Nephilim were the children of angels and ancient legends, not bound by the will of God, but powerful and mighty and a free will. That's exactly why Construct was named after them. This card wasn't just strong because of its effect to kill cards when it attacks, it was strong because of what it represented. Endless card economy and reliable deck control. Construct was forbidden a while ago, but I sometimes worry Konami may forget why they did that and return her to ravage the poor non-meta local players who don't even know what's coming. Number 7, Bryanak, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Before the days of Quasar, we had the hardships of enduring a fight against Bryanak, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. I played the fabled Rage and Turbo deck back then and had the pleasure of pulling this card from a pack. Imagine the field full of monsters, strong lockdown spells and traps, and then suddenly, they're not all just back in the hand, but because I discarded all these fabled cards to do it, now I have a field full of angry monsters that just gonna, are gonna get free swipes in. I'm not giving this card credit enough, this guy was a very good example of very bad card development skills, and I shudder at the thought of a mermail deck being able to play this card today. Number 6, Cosmo Dark Destroyer. For me, this card doesn't just represent a boss monster, it represents my most recent dislike of the game. For a while, I was having a very hard time get playing against Cosmos, mostly because anytime I tried to make something or do a, do a move, uh, they'd summon Dark Destroyer, pop me, my card, and then it put me back to step 1. Uh, Cosmo Dark Destroyer is in a lot of ways the same as El Shadow Construct in the respect of its card economy. Anytime it leaves, it makes something to take its place, and more often than not, it's a tin can that sets up for a Dark Destroyer to come in, or a straw man to make the Dark Destroyer that was already gone come back. It's very powerful, and it's very bothersome. Number 5, Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. Some cards have been unveiled in the recent years that are not just overpowered, but would sometimes be considered unfair in existence. Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon is one such card. Being immune to all card effects is one thing, but while existing with the Raid Raptor material, he eats through the field's attack power on each end phase by a thousand, and if nothing's left on the opponent's side, he burns your opponent for a thousand life points. Something that's worse is related to the deck, Raid Raptors. If they summon him, and then he dies by some means, like Utopia Lightning or something else, you merely have to banish the rank up magic skip force in the grave that you used to summon him, and then resummon him for free. Reviving this card in such an instant made this a very unfair game state changer, and with so many methods of making him, I would say this card deserves its right space on the list. Number 4, Judgment Dragon. 
In the late GX era, Judgment Dragon was probably the most fearsome card in existence until Dark Armed came out. Often called Independence Day at my locals in reference to the alien city-destroying weapon used in the movie, a friend ran Light's one for years to come, not caring about almost any of the meta shift purely because Judgment Dragon was just so devastating. A creature with a built-in board wipe is definitely something to fear, and in a deck based on milling to get this guy out, you'd have to be sure that everyone was running for the hills. Number 3, Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. Before Judgment Dragon, this card was forbidden to all. The terror that Kaiba's deck wrought has been represented in one card that outshone everything else in existence. By banishing a light and a dark, you could basically seal an opponent's fate before they got a turn, killing everything on the field and hand, and not just that, but burning the opponent as well. Starting out with this card enabled both players to not just experience the fun times of top decking, but also, were you to have the last at least a little bit of graveyard control back in the day, you basically won. Even if you didn't decide to killing everything, Envoy of the End was a huge monster that was freely summonable in an instant just like Chaos Sorcerer, and being 3000 attack definitely deserves its place on this list. Number 2, Super Quantal Mech King, Great Magnus. The Super Quantal Endgame card is represented in the Titanic Great Magnus, a veritable Death Star on legs that doesn't just kill you, it stops you from doing anything to it. Fusing to make this card may seem confusing at times, but not at all difficult with the field spell. And back at full power with the aid of 3 Chicken Game, 3 Reasoning, and 3 Emberton's Teleport, you could easily bring this Megazord out with enough material to send your opponent packing for good. Combined with a titanic set of attack and defense, this card would keep coming at you even if you found a way to kill it, as it would simply separate into its swords and eventually just return to its normal form next turn. Today, this card has faded into obscurity, but one day it may return. Number 1. Apoclafort Towers When this card was made in the OCG, they simply called it Killer because that is what it is. This card is a killer of decks and of games. When brought to the attention of the meta, Clifford swapped their initial builds that were reliable and unique to a streamlined power fetch build that's only job in life was to make this card. Apoclifort Towers cannot be harmed by anything under its level, and not just that, weakens any special summon monster by 500 attack and defense. To make matters worse, each turn he forces the opponent in to lose a monster. The scariness about this card was that it wasn't just a problem, it's what happens when you make it. Clifford's became unopposed when Tower was on board, and after a short time, Konami saw what they had to do. They killed the towers, and the deck faded away for a while, until recently, when a Demise build brought it back to its older variant's power. Nowadays, when folk talk about powerful cards, they refer to them as the new towers, or towers on crack. But in the end, there was only one Apocalypse Towers. Alright, thanks everyone for listening in on my top 10. If you enjoyed what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe, and give me an idea for another one of these lists. As always, I appreciate you all, and I hope you guys have a great day and a great night. This is Mystic V, signing off.